Let's do it. Um, seven o'clock. Let me check my audio real quick. Make sure everything's good. Then we'll get uh, we'll get started. Oh. YouTube always takes a second. All right. Wait, wait. <coughs> there it is. <clears throat> All right. So let's do this. Um, so welcome to uh, week three of of level design right really at this point right we're uh we're kind of just i would say like we're wrapping things up right but we're starting to kind of we have an idea of kind of what we're doing and we're starting to kind of like you know solidify down um i'm going to talk about some of the things that um i was doing this past week right uh in terms of like this painting i mean i'll talk about some of the other stuff too but in terms of this painting talking about some of the things i was doing and then um i'll kind of talk about what i want to do coming up right so from last week, I have a JPEG of it. <clears throat> so this looks like a mess. It just doesn't look good. But, you know, I think at the time, whenever I was doing it, I was feeling, I was, I'm going to be honest, I was feeling a little bit lost. I was like, ah, I'm not sure how this is going to go. There's a lot of things that were kind of like just not quite meshing, right? And um, for me, that's actually, to be honest, that's actually a very natural part of the process, right? There is something where... Um, I usually don't know for a long time of like, hey, what's uh, what's supposed to be happening here? What's the uh, the kind of uh, main idea? And then, you know, you kind of start stumbling across it. Right. So um, and, you know, I think for me, like I started this from from this step right here, right from what we're looking at right now into what it is right now. Right. Um, that was maybe an extra two to three hours. Um, you know, a lot of the, you know, if you look at like some of that right building, it's actually a lot of the same things. Left buildings, a lot of the same things. I just really kind of focused on that foreground uh, kind of bridge area thing, and then the uh, the kind of main structure, right? Uh, and that and that threw some I threw I threw like uh, some silhouettes in the back and some clouds, and it, it looks okay right now. Um, but. The reason I want to show this step is because, like, I think last week I was talking about it where, like, oh, you know, when you start rendering the birds or figuring out cut lines, you pro you're probably lost, right? There are, at the very least, there's a level of, you know, not understanding where you're going. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's very natural to feel that way. I think, um, you know, in the beginning, if, as, as long as you, you're starting to kind of trying to address the things, I, I, I kind of think about it, think of, think of it like a puzzle where, like, you know how, you kind of lay out all your pieces and then you start with like a corner piece and then that corner piece kind of turns into an edge piece. And then, you know, you're kind of like building from there. Right. And then, and then you have a good majority of that puzzle. Right. It's the same thing for me where I think when I'm starting this, I'm just trying to find something to grab onto. Right. I, in, in this kind of first stage, the first, this was like what, uh, two hours from here, you know, or an hour and a half really, uh, from here into this, and I kind of laid down the base of what I was looking for, uh, but it was, really wasn't quite there yet. And now, right, after I did eventually kind of solidify, I guess, a direction, whether it's the best direction or not, who really knows, but it is a direction. And uh, we're going to kind of continue this on from here uh, with some thoughts in mind, right? So this week, uh, we're going to be working on uh, lighting and mood, right, um, because you know, whenever we set up a, a painting, right, the set dressing and stuff like the trees and the different like, you know, consoles and, you know, various, various shop lights and this and that, right, though, you know, that's, that's going to help the design, right, like we talked about last week, where, you know, when you're running around, around this, this level, right, you'll see somebody's silhouette against those windows. And that's very purposeful, right? The whole point would be everywhere that we want people to kind of go, right there's going to be a light source in there or around there that way when when you're standing eye level with them they're going to be silhouetted and you kind of see that movement right which it makes it a little bit more active of a space versus like if it's all dark you know it's really hard to see people you know what i mean um so that's part of it and then two having this kind of different kind of thing right and during my sketch phase, I had this kind of cylinder. It was actually, it's like, it looks like a can right now. And I think it's because of that line right there, uh, or not uh, the lack of the line right there, where it's just kind of like a, a like a kind of uh, ellipse shape, right? Um, but I didn't really like it. But the whole intention behind this was that I just needed to feel different than this stuff over here, right? I wanted the form language to be, you know, square or like, you know, I guess uh, 
uh, chamfered edge square, right? That typical sci-fi language. And then here I wanted to be something else, but I was like, ah, it felt a little too jarring. So what I did was I turned it back into that square that we needed, right? Or that, that we had in the beginning phase, but then I just kind of like made it a different color, right? And the thought process is the same, but the execution is different, right? Where I do need it to stand out, so it is standing out, but using like, you know, color and hue um, versus, uh, you know, shape and uh, things like that, right? So, you know, the, the fundamental idea is the same, but, you know, I guess uh, the execution is slightly different, right? And then uh, from there, right, I just kind of added some lights. I added some trees, right, to make it feel a little more personal. A lot of this stuff really is placeholder right now. And that's that's what I wanted to kind of explain, um, you know, moving in from, you know, the I guess that block out phase into here, right? A lot of this is going to be just a little bit of something to kind of get us, um, you know, I guess... Uh, understanding the space better right as we get into rendering we have a whole other week uh, after this week um, to kind of get like really push this quality bar a lot higher um you know it's it's not too big a deal right now but what i do need to know is that there is something there there's something there there's something there right there's things in places and that's what we're trying to establish we want the uh for the set dressing section we want to understand what's our, what's in the scene and then we can go in and render. Try not to confuse uh, those two ideas, right? Because I think when we talk about set dressing, um, there's this idea of, oh, you have to, uh, you know, I guess, uh, really kind of like design out every single piece as soon as you put it in. And you really don't. You just need something that's like, that's kind of what I want. And then we'll come back to it, right? Because um, you don't want to commit too early to uh, an idea because you know in a, in a real life setting we don't even know if our, our art director even like likes this you know what i mean like it's just something where the the image that we have here it's kind of like mostly what we want and then you know after with this next pass this lighting pass is kind of when i'd probably show my uh my leads or my client or whatever and be like hey is this kind of what we're looking for and then if they say yes great i move on and i kind of like you know start getting uh, all the bells and whistles in there start making all the textures look really nice uh, but for now i just need just enough to communicate you know what's happening right so that's what's happening here <clears throat> so last week i grabbed this uh this screenshot from bullet train right it has it has a bunch of lights in it It has like a you know a, i mean it's just japan really and I'm, what I want to do is kind of capture this vibe, especially like kind of what's happening in this kind of bottom section here with a lot of lights, a lot of different colors and things like that. And I want to kind of transfer that information into here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, right? But I want the same kind of feeling. And this is what we're going to be doing today, right? We're going to be taking a uh, more or less ambient scene, right? There's really not a lot of lighting kind of happening here. Uh, and we want to start converting this into, you know, something that makes sense right something that's a little bit uh uh better designed right so cool so first things right um I, something that i wanted i wanted to mention uh we are uh, you know when i'm doing this right i am setting up my colors in a certain way i have i have little things here and there that are i guess things that i've been planning right where it's like i have these kind of warmer yellowish lights right or even like when i add like any other color in the scene i'm avoiding red right because in this scene in this world in this game this level um the red really means you know like the the place where we want to go right it's supposed to stand out because whether you come from here you're standing over here you come from this side when you see this red building you know that you're supposed to at the very least try and go in there right it's a it's a more active place it's a it's a, a more direct path to something so i want this to kind of stand out so any lights i do outside of that i try not to represent um too powerfully right right if i try to put some red and i just make this thing red or you know i kind of add a lot of red lights everywhere it starts kind of watering down that scene and you know it could it could be good it could uh, you know it might not but just understand there's an like there's an intention behind all this right so all right <clears throat> let's do this um so the first thing i like to do right is really just get into um i think bigger overall changes right um so what i like like you know 
uh, I'll just kind of sit on top, sit on the, like above my layers, right? Like the, the highest, you know, in the layer stack. And then I'll just like, just try things, right? So I'm gonna try some like color lookups right now to see what happens. I, um, whenever I'm doing this phase, you ever like not know where to start? You know what I mean? Like in a, in a color pass, right? It's really hard sometimes. I think because, um, you know, any minor changes that you do don't really stick, right? Because it's like, oh, this one thing kind of did it, but, it, you know, you're not really seeing it in the rest. So I try not to, um, I guess, do small changes like that. What I try to do is these kind of bigger, broader changes right off the bat. And then I kind of know where I'm going from there, right? So, for example, like this looks kind of cool. Right, maybe I want to turn that up, turn that down just a little bit. Turn it down a lot. Actually, what if I did this? Instead of turning it down, you can mask it out. And then I like, I like how strong it is in like certain sections. Cool. That's kind of cool, right? It gives us something. And then here, I'm gonna do a soft light layer. I'm gonna grab some of this kind of orangey kind of color. Let's see. Boom. And what I'm doing here, right? We're just trying to get a hint. Like I don't need it doesn't need to be accurate quite yet, right? We'll we'll fix that. We'll we'll make it look good. Uh, for now, what I want to do is make it feel like it's real. Make it feel like it's you know the way it's supposed to feel, right? Soft light. Oh, for those of you like in the Discord stuff right now, um, I guess we're just kind of demoing right now. So if you guys have any questions, hit me up. For I mean, for for the Discord, YouTube, whoever. Um, I do have some stuff I want to talk about. I had a, I had a very interesting conversation this week um, that uh, I always find really helpful. I always find um, these these kind of uh, it's it's interesting to hear where kind of people are at and like what they're doing in life, right? And it's like uh, I wanted to kind of talk about it because. It's something that a lot of people actually run into pretty frequently. Uh, they just don't know that, don't know how to handle something like that. You know what I mean? So I'm going to turn that on a little brighter because I want this to be a, uh, I want that to be like a sign. I want it to be like a graphic or something, right? So I'm going to make that a little bit brighter, even though like right now, technically speaking, there's nothing on there yet, right? Well, maybe I should just fill it with something. Let's see. Hi, Kenny. Yo. What's up, Alex? How's it going, dude? Going okay. I'm back uh, back in business. My mom was visiting for a week and basically puts everything on pause while she's here. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like that, man. It uh, yeah. It is It is the, the way that life works. <laughs> How's everything? How's... Uh, How's, uh, I guess your first day, right? You started your first day recently? Yeah, kind of, you know, not, not much going on as of yet. Still just figuring out tech onboarding. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've started up my stuff with ArtWad as well. So I've done uh, student feedback. I'm working on demo material doing. So I'm getting paid to practice basically, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, right now doing well i guess if i say it would yeah don't 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 do that <laughs> don't do that yeah um, i was just thinking it's like oh we're all buddies here but it's kind of pop culture -y related and it's kind of nice to have something that like uh the final demonstrations i can use for my own work so it can kind of turn into prints and maybe it can you know build out into like stuff for conventions later on dope oh yeah i guess um you were we were talking about i guess you know i guess doing our own things uh not like each other's thing but like you know like the whole idea of doing uh other stuff i guess like uh, how how's that going for you what's uh what conclusions well, have you jumped have you come to <laughs> slow progress so far but um i i'm really hopeful at least over the next year with the kind of work that I see I'm going to be doing with EA and Artwell, that all my personal stuff can be completely personal. So 
Like you, like when we had last talked one on one, Kenny, you mentioned that you didn't think I needed to do, you know, any of the, the nitty gritty production stuff in my portfolio. Yeah. And Jessica had just stayed with me two weeks ago, and she's been killing it in conventions. And she had a a cool phrase that she said, like, like if you keep taking classes, you might be in a student mindset forever, kind of thing. It's oh. something along those lines. Dude, this is perfect. Sometimes you have to just step away and make do what you know. Yeah. And so that that was nice of her to say. And um, so I I think where I want to go towards is um, kind of trying to really dive into storytelling and comps with figures in them and have... Like a big goal would be some sort of art book of a project that's kind of mixed with like a one shot comic and concept art, you know, just blending all my skills together, but putting it in one package sort of thing. Yeah. Dope. Dude, uh, I'm not going to lie. This, uh, that, that idea that you just brought up like just then, like we didn't script this by the way. I'm not, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have Alex bring any of this up. It's exactly what I want to talk about today. And it's nice because, um, you know, some of the people here are, are, I guess, from, I guess, uh, more advanced students to even like entry level professionals or people that that have had their first job, which is really nice. Um, So we can talk about that in a second, but it's uh, it's actually amazing. I'm I'm actually really excited to talk about this. I'm actually sad that there's less people in the Discord today. Just uh, they're missing out, dude. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it is what it is. That's why. That's why you guys are you guys, and they're them, right? <laughs> I'm not How much did he pay you to talk about this? Oh, How dude. much did he pay you to talk about this, Alex? I haven't talked to Kenny in a while. He's on. He's, he's on. Don't lie. Don't lie. On my first day went. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's so sick, though. I'm hyped for you, man. Yay, dude. All right, before I talk, before I, before I break into my my long ranty self. Um, this is kind of what I like to do, right? <clears throat> Going back to this real quick, right? We have basically the same image that we start, like, you know, just started with like 10 seconds ago, right? And then, you know, throughout the last like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, um, I just kind of threw on some some layers. I just threw on some lights. And right now, it's, very, it's, a, it's a cheap version of what I want, right? Because it's not really quite there yet. There's a lot here that's like, it doesn't really, you know, a, you know, a bunch of airbrushy kind of things don't quite work, right? It's not professional quite yet, but it gets the idea across, right? And so now, as I'm going through this image, as I'm kind of, um, you know, working with this thing, um, this is kind of what I want to start aiming for, right? Um, it has the kind of tone that I'm looking for. There's a lot, there's a lot to be desired here. I'm going to save this out and kind of show you, I'll pull it up again, either next week, um, by the end, or like, you know, showing you where I came from or by the end of this, uh, this session today, if I, if I can kind of get it far enough. Um, but right, just really quickly, I just made something and I call it CC, right? Just, uh, color corrections. And I just put a little bit of like just big washes, um, some, you know, some different like layer styles and various things like that to kind of help me um, do what I need to do for this scene. I can render, I can kind of make things, you know, nicer for sure, right? I can make the lights kind of just look better overall, but I need a, I need a guide, right? Because a lot of times when we do stuff like this, um, it can be very, uh, difficult to kind of make this stuff work out i guess uh when you don't really know what you're aiming for right you're kind of just slowly increasing your lights a little bit you're kind of doing some things here and there what i really like doing right treat it as if it's a flat painting and sometimes i'll just make a version on top right i'll just completely flatten it right like like this layer 96 right here and then i'll just start painting sometimes right just to kind of see where it's going to go because even though i'm going to have to redo that work in a second right? The whole point is, it is kind of most of the way there. I just need to replicate it. And replicating something is so much easier. It is way easier to uh, just kind of replicate a thing than it is to like, you know, I guess, uh, actually have to like, you know, uh, paint it 
without like, I guess, knowing where you're going, because now you're stumbling across ideas versus having a direct goal, right? This is probably what I would send to a client. I mean, not probably, this is what I would send to a client, like a medium ish level, level pain and be like, Hey, is this lighting? Is this everything kind of going the right direction for you? And if it is great, I'll slow down and I'll start kind of painting things like I will in a second, <clears throat> you know, making the lights actually bounce around things, zooming in, uh, fixing tones and stuff. Uh, but it starts here because once you get this right, you're uh, you're probably going to be pretty good, right? So something that I want to mention, right? Some of these layers work, right? Like this layer, uh, actually, sorry. Uh, like this layer right here, this color lookup layer, this works as is, right? I won't need to change that. I just need to turn it off whenever I start painting, right? Because your color selections are going to be messed up. Um, so these overall like kind of gradient effects and just kind of tonal shifts and stuff, those are fine. Soft light, not as fine, but, you know, you can turn it down and kind of get it, you know, fitting nicely, but you do need to kind of paint something for that, right? Same thing with this one here. The soft light tone doesn't really quite work that well, right? It's not that it doesn't do the work. It just doesn't look as good as actually painting it. So you do have to keep that in mind. Um, levels layers are always work, just like the uh, color lookup. So I don't need to change that at all. I just need to turn it off, right? And then this kind of atmosphere effect, you can leave that as is. I tend not to just because uh, it gets hard to kind of work around it sometimes. But, um, you know, just kind of knowing what layers you can and can't keep, right? Soft light layers don't create the illusion of light, right? It, I mean, it looks kind of like light, but it's like a cheap version of it. So we want to actually paint that versus some of the adjustment layers. You can just turn those back on at the end and you'll be back in business, right? And so now <clears throat> I can turn everything off, right? That whole color correction um, pack, right? This folder, and then just start painting. And this is kind of where we're going to start here. I'm going to kind of go in and then just start kind of messing with things, right? So technically speaking, right, the color and mood section of this is, 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 is done, not done, but it's like, it's already planned. We just need to make it better, right? And I did want to kind of point out something. I was, I was messing with this, uh, this board here, this, uh, this banner thing, right? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, my thing is red, right? And just using a little bit of color theory, I was like, oh, the opposite color of that is green. And so I was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool if, uh, if this, um, I guess, had had that kind of vibrancy to it, right? You know, when you put uh, two opposite colors next to each other, it creates a little bit more attention, right? So it feels like a hologram, like, you know, and I just kind of dropped my, my own painting into that. I'll design that in a second. Uh, but that's the logic behind why I picked green versus like usually any other color, right? And then now with that in mind, this green actually probably doesn't work as well because now we're kind of splitting the attention. Uh, in which case, I'll probably turn that to like a yellow light or something, right? Just to kind of match that, ma match with the rest of the scene and uh, have it, you know, it's just like in the middle of turning yellow or something, right? So that's the idea. Now let's kind of start running, right? So, <clears throat> all right. So, <clears throat> we um i was having a conversation this past week i've had a, i've had a couple conversations this past week um and it was interesting because i have a friend um i'm not gonna name who but you know he's he, he's one of my friends and we were talking about work right we were talking about i guess you know, like what to put in portfolios. And he's, he's a higher level artist. He's not a, not a junior by any means. He's like senior and above. And I was talking to, I was talking to him and, um, he, uh, you know, I asked him, I was like, Oh, what have you been doing? Right. What's, what's been going on? Like, what do you, cause he asked me for adv advice on his portfolio. And <clears throat> he says he went, like he told me, okay, yeah. So this is kind of what I'm doing. You know, uh, I saw that um, some of these artists that 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 uh, that are getting work have like kind of more production pieces and more uh, turnarounds and this and that. Right. He said that. Um, and for those that kind of know me, right, either through the live stream or even through my class, that is something that I say a lot. Right. That's something that I uh, often tell most of my students, if not all, um, and even like some like kind of some teetering between like, the professional line, right? Have production work, show that you can do things, right? Um, and even Alex said it a second ago where, um, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I changed that, that, uh, that, that, that critique for him, right? And the reason for that <clears throat> is because 
as you get deeper into your career, right, as you get deeper into the job market, right, whether you're kind of going from your first job to your second job, third to fourth, right, junior to mid-level, mid-level to senior, right, because every single time that you jump from job to job, ideally, your experience level should jump up as well, right? Um, that's not that crazy of an idea. You're, ideally, you're probably more senior than you were before, right? That's not crazy. But a lot of us approach it with the same mentality that we had as a junior, right? So for example, when I was talking to my friend, he was like, oh yeah, I'm trying to I, 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 I'm trying to make some more like production turnarounds and this and that because my portfolio is lacking it. And I said, you know, maybe. I said, it's not wrong, technically speaking, but I really don't think you need to do that, right? And the reason I said that was because he's a senior level artist, right? Because the things that people look for when you're hiring a junior level artist, right, is are you able to do production work? You know, because... Most people aren't capable of doing that it, it, because they've never had to. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something where if you've never had to do production work, it looks weird. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, how many of you have thought about doing like a turnaround of like a pencil for and put it in your portfolio? You know what I mean? Like, I've done turnarounds of like the most basic shit, right? Um, because you would never think about doing that because why would you right there's bigger fish to fry essentially right and so for him he was like oh i need some more production work which you know i'm not saying wouldn't help it's just that he's at a different level and if you want the jobs that you're actually aiming for you might not get what you're looking for with the portfolio that you're saying that you're going to create you know what i mean um mm -hmm. because at a senior level they don't look for turnarounds anymore if you look at my portfolio they, they're not looking for um, turnarounds anymore. So, you know what I mean? So why am I still able to get jobs? Why am I still, you know, I guess, um, you know, not saying I'm like raking in jobs or anything, but I do have an ability to find work. Um, and so, you know, when, if I'm not showing any production work and I tell my students this all the time, wait, why, why either one, right? Lying to my students, right? Where it's like, hey, I'm telling you the wrong thing. Or two, it's like kind of like I'm not doing what I say, normally say, right? And the whole reason behind that is because we're at a different level, right? We're not applying for the same jobs. I'm not applying for a junior position. So my portfolio shouldn't reflect that, right? And I think that's a big thing because my friend, he also teaches classes and he, he talks to a lot of students as well. And he's not wrong in his i guess assessment of like what he <laughs> thinks he's missing he's wrong in the types of jobs that he's probably going for right um you know i guess most people will kind of take whatever jobs they get right like you know it is something where uh even at this even at this time in our industry right where i guess things are rocky to say the least right you know it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly the best time in the world and so Whenever, um, you know, I, I'm talking to friends, they're like, yeah, I'll take whatever, right? If it's a junior job, I'll take it. If it's a senior job, you know, hopefully, but, you know, I'll take that too, right? And so, you know, most artists are going to take whatever they're given, right? But you have to, you have to understand you want to create the portfolio for the job that you're going for, right? And this goes double with students where we hear this all the time where you're like, Oh, I want to I want to do keyframes for for studios, right? I, I, like I, I, my portfolio is full of keyframes because that's what I want to do, and it's the same conversation where, you know, like I always tell my students, like if you want to do keyframes, I'm not stopping you, right? You, you can do whatever you want. The issue is, will you get hired for it, and how much time do you have, right? Because it's not really about, um, you know if you should or shouldn't it's just you're now competing with senior slash super senior level artists right because you know that's who's doing the keyframes the junior artists never i don't say never but more often than not don't do keyframe work and it's not that you shouldn't include it right i i, I always tell everybody to at least try and include some of it into your into your portfolio because you know you want a little bit of that right 
But a big part of it, especially for junior artists, right, should be production work because you don't have the trust yet behind a studio, right? Uh, for example, I've, I've worked with studios before and I've done junior level work. I've done turnarounds. I've done call outs. You know, I've done all those things. And if they ask me, I, I have the ability to show it. But at, at this stage, they don't ask me anymore. They're like, oh, you work for this client? Cool. You know, uh, with, with a certain level resume, they stop asking you for those things, right? And so you really want to know that's like, okay, if we're all looking for work, right? You know, everyone's, you know, there's a, there's a level of, of, I don't say desperation, but, you know, we'll kind of take whatever job, right? You, you have to know what kind of job that you're actually aiming for when you put these things in your portfolio, right? Because now it's like, okay, uh, you know, money's running out, time's running out. Um, I really need to, um, you know, I guess... Uh, find work essentially because you know a lot of us are, are, are out of work at this point right uh, but focusing on the wrong things can be detrimental right because now you're like a senior level artist and then you're showing junior level work Th in a senior level role they're not looking for turnarounds from those artists right you don't you don't hire craig mullins i'm not saying like we're at the same league as craig mullins but you know you're not you, you don't hire craig mullins to do turnarounds you know what i'm saying because it's like it's just a waste of time and money it's why, why would you do that just just hire some junior and they can probably do the same thing uh but craig right he's probably good for something else right he's probably good for a lot of the pitch work slash senior work um because you know he's craig mother f and mullins right um so <laughs> The same advice that we give students that really like doing keyframes is the same advice that I would give to seniors trying to figure out how to make their portfolio better. Because right now, there's probably a lot of people that have been, um, I guess, working for a, little, a certain amount of time, right? And then, you know, they just got let go recently or whatever happened, right? And so now how you know what do you like oftentimes it's like oh i need to make some stuff for my portfolio and it's like oh what what should i put in there you know um and oftentimes it's like oh yeah you know i i don't really have a lot of production works so let me throw that in and that is usually going to be a waste of time because you're not really going to be hired for stuff like that so why even do it you know um and it's not it's not really about like if uh like like a studio is looking for it right it's like i mean you know if they've seen that you've you've worked at a bunch of different places they can probably assume that you've done something like that before at the very least you understand what production is and it won't be that hard to kind of you know make you do something like that you know what i'm saying so it's a very it's a very weird topic and, and i actually feel uh feel this way about like a lot of things like when we get advice from artists right it's you have to be very careful as to who you're getting advice from and if you're the person giving advice uh who you're giving advice to right like because i'll hear advice that you know some some of my students get or whoever get right and i'm like oh don't don't do that i don't want to say it like that but like it's like it's detrimental if you were to do that you know what i mean like it's not it like it's it's going to set you back years you're, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to be too dramatic, but you know, it's, it's a lot of like, some advice is great. Right. Um, but it just depends on like, kind of, you know, what position you are in your career slash life. Right. I think, um, and this happens a lot at like places like Lightbox, uh, a lot of places like career job kind of placement things. Um, I'll like, cause I'll, I'll, I'll table for example, right. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to students. I'll show up and you know, we'll kind of communicate or whatever. And I'm talking to students and they're like, Oh yeah. Uh, we, uh, we talked to this recruiter. I'm like, great. That's awesome. Okay. And they said, Oh, they said, do this. I'm like, wait, what? Why'd they tell you to do that? There's no, like, it's like somebody that's like super into color keys and they're like, Hey, we really need line work. So you should do a lot of line work. And it's like, mm -hmm. but that's not what they're trying to do. You know, it's like, it's like telling a storyboard artist to learn how to render. It's like, it's not, it's not what they're intending on doing. So why make them do it? Or I guess why change their entire trajectory, right? Even, even for me, right? Where it's like, if you're listening to stuff that I'm saying now, um, like really take into account where I'm coming from 
and where you're at, right? Because my advice sometimes, right, is geared towards a different audience, right? This audience, for example, of like uh, people that I'm talking to right now, these people are, you know, mid-level artists, uh, maybe even maybe even senior level artists that are like tr- like having a hard time finding work or whatever it is, right? You know, you really shouldn't be doing a lot of production work. You should be trying to set direction, trying to uh, create, um, you know, I guess uh, projects that really show your ability to drive production, right? Not in a production art sense. It's more of the, you know, um, I guess uh, blue sky development, like, you know, very senior level things. Think about some of the work that your seniors have done, right? Where it's like, you know, they gave you a whole, like, they give you a prompt where it's like, oh yeah, we want this, I don't know, like keyframe where this character does this thing or whatever, right? Um, and then you, you know, you just, cre- like, they just create the whole world, right? They, they just, they're just given some words on, on, uh, on, uh, on a page and then they're expected to just create this whole thing. And that's what a senior level artist does, right? They, they drive the narrative. They kind of push the whole ideation phase or the whole idea of that project, right? On top of, you know, a bunch of other things like leading, leading other artists and stuff like that, or I guess helping other artists, I should say. Um, but, you know, if you're a junior level artist, this advice, not, not saying it doesn't apply to you, you're just not ready for that yet. You really should be kind of making production work for studios because they don't trust that you can do it yet. And oftentimes uh, a lot of artists can't just because they, you know, you've never had to. So why would you need to know how to do that? You know what I mean? Um, So it's a really weird one and um, it can be, you know, the intention is right. It's just that you're not at that stage anymore and you have to know that. Right. Um, and this is kind of what I was saying with uh, some of my some of my students, where some of the more advanced students, I actually tell them, "Hey, yeah, stop. You know, you don't really need turnarounds anymore. You don't because you already did it once. You know, and like if I see that you did a turnaround here, right, or you know, uh, some more production art type stuff, right, uh, we don't need to see it again, right? You know, most competent recruiters, which um, I will say, not all of them are competent." Um, some most competent recruiters will look at a turnaround of a character and assume that you can repeat that again and again, right? It's not, it's not a big deal that, um, you know, it's not some miracle that you did that once, you know what I mean? Like they'll be like, okay, cool. And then, you know, you just show some cool characters after that or, or cool environments or whatever. Right. It's like, it's easy at that point. Cause they can just assume like, okay, he did one line drawing here. He probably knows how to line draw, you know, but if you're if you're a senior level artist or trying to be a senior level artist and you're showing junior level work that's the kind of work you're going to get right it's i mean it's as simple as that it um but you just have to kind of be careful of of some of that advice slash some of those like kind of things you know that makes sense it's um it's a weird one man i think uh because or even even then like there's artists that i like i fully trust right i'm like if i were to point um you know a a student that way i fully trust that you know they would get the correct advice but sometimes it's like oh that advice doesn't apply to this student at all right sometimes um you know it let's say let's say this person's like a heavy prop artist right and then i send them an environment artist and like oh yeah you know get really good at designing these things like well i mean it's not that it's not that props aren't going to be useful for this person but you know, or let, let, let's switch, let's switch prop with characters, right? Because you know, uh, I'll send, I'll, you know, you send them to an artist that's more of a character designer, and then like, you know, they'll kind of be like, oh yeah, you should, you know, include figures more. You should do this or that. You, should, you know what I mean? And it's like it's correct advice. It's just for the wrong person, and you really have to be careful of that. Because um, I'll get this a lot, especially in classes where it, I don't want to say it gets combative, but some people are like, oh, this person said this, I'm like. I mean, sure, you know, like, yeah, because they're that person, but you're not them, you know, and that's, I think, uh, a, a huge issue that we run into a lot, especially in the more of the education space where um, there's a lot of like demystifying or I guess trying to dissect uh, what advice they've heard and why they're making the decisions that they're actually making now, you know? Yeah. I also think there's, you know, you spend so much time uh, working yourself just to be production ready that 
we lose sight of our personal voice and it, you have to be encouraged to step back into exploring what makes you unique that gets you to that senior level position yeah because you're you're just going to be stuck doing what you think studios want to see rather than what's going to set you apart as being that one desirable voice yeah that's exactly it man it's like because the beginning right it's really as a for a junior level artist right all you really need to be able to do is like be able to draw and paint and design and, and design is like you got to be okay at design you don't even have to actually be that good you just have to be good enough to where if i tell you something you can like kind of figure it out right um that's i mean m most junior work is like that i'm not saying all junior works like that but a lot of junior work is just being able to follow instructions right just like you know because the art direction is going to be laid out for you right like they're going to give you a packet that says hey this plus this equals your painting and like or they'll even give you a sketch half the time right i think like in the beginning um my art director creative creative directors and stuff like that they would just they would do a quick sketch it took 10 seconds it looks like dog dog shit right and you would actually like have to just clean it up and that was that was a lot of junior work for a while because it was so much faster um for them just to do it than it was to explain to me and hopefully i get it right you know because you know i was a i was a greener artist i didn't know how to translate a lot of those things so they just supplied me with the drawings a lot of my better designs in the beginning was like that where they just gave me some sketches and then i just kind of you know i guess uh uh went went um kind of like cleaned it up essentially right obviously i still i still had some creativity in the kind of medium to small areas right the, the big picture was them but the medium to small was me and you know as you get better right they'll kind of give you more and more of that sketch to eventually you're the one providing sketches you're the one that's thinking you're the one that's creating this uh this earlier art that uh you know i guess uh can be used for you know guiding other artists right because like as a senior level artist uh you know a lot of the assignments not a lot of them but so, some of the assignments are oh yeah this other person is kind of struggling with this thing can you like help them out or can you like either one fix it save it which is uh which is an option um which happens right you know i guess as a as an artist like they'll kind of we'll kind of come in and um you know clean up some of the paintings or like fix whatever right and then we'll get it shipped off um but also right it could be oh yeah can you just provide and guide this this artist real quick just to kind of get them to you know where they need to go type of thing and you know sometimes that's it and um but it's that understanding of design that uh junior artists are oftentimes lacking or i guess at the very least they're not as good at it right which you know i'm not expecting you to be not expecting you to be because you know you're you're new generally speaking you know yeah it's a um it's a weird one i think um so it's as a uh as a, as, a, as an artist like I'll, I'll say things especially like publicly like this where like we're on a stream hundreds of people watch it or whatever um you know this is something where i you know there's a level of some things that i'm saying will apply to you some things really won't if you're a more beginner level artist right really just just get good at drawing and painting because that's all we need you to do right uh if you can if you can do that uh, you're going to be a great junior level artist, right? Uh, but eventually you got to start thinking, right? And some of my friends that are kind of going through that transition now where it's like, you know, um, they are, let's say, a, uh, a maybe a mid-level artist and like, I don't know why I'm not getting these senior level roles, you know? Um, usually it's, it's, stu it's stuff like that where it's like, you're well, you're showing them a bunch of junior stuff. So why would they hire you? You know, why, why would they kind of put you know 100 120 grand into you or whatever right because oftentimes um the the stuff that you're, you're you're probably showing them just doesn't really look that inspiring right doesn't actually do anything or it's, it's not what they need you know um mm -hmm. because it's a lot of like turnarounds it's not it's not that they don't need turnarounds it's just that that's not the first thing they're actually looking for uh, when they're looking for like artists and stuff like that right
That's kind of cool. So I'm just kind of like cleaning things up right now. We're just, I'm going to start tackling this kind of front building here. I kind of put in some random shapes and then, not that I'm like, not that it's bad or anything. It's just not, not that good. It's like generic sci-fi right now, which I need to like stop. I've been reinvigorated on reading comic books. Recently. Nice. Why, why is that? What happened? I don't know. I just, um, I think I, I'm trying to think, why did I bring it up? Oh, we went to the library. And just that, that's really what brought it up again. I took my daughter to the library for story time. And, um, our libraries have fantastic comic book collections. And I used to go there a lot when I was first starting out and I would just, uh, like rent out half a shelf and um, bust through them. I just realized that over the last four years, I kind of lost sight of that a little bit going through the concept art class ringer. You know? Yeah. And like the most exciting thing for me when I was starting out was reading comics and seeing all uh, and like spider verse the art was amazing yes but it was you know it was a whole combination of storytelling not just making a landscape or whatever and so it's just i think what what i was saying earlier that jessica told me that you're in a student mindset you're constantly looking for more things to be a student of and of course it's healthy to be constantly learning but if you don't step away from it and try to remember what got you to start in the first place like what what are you moving towards what are you, what's actually driving you to want to be able to create anyway yeah you know, just making an image look production ready you know it's another image but what you've been you've said it before yourself too you know like what is your voice and all that and i think that for myself at least that's hopefully best done for story and because, you know, in my spare time, I, I've written a lot of stuff and had a background in writing and so for fun. Yeah. Don't. So I, I'm curious to, to see what I can do with that. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting. I think, um, like, because I'll say a lot of things. Like, I'll, you know, like these streams, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of things that just kind of come out like casually where and maybe I should probably put more focus on some things. I don't know. But there is a level of like, you know, you're, you really only catch like, you know, 10, 10, 20 percent of it. Right. D depending on your level, for example, like if you're if you're really focused on like learning how to draw and paint. Generally speaking, right, the, the drawing and painting things kind of stick with you a little bit harder. Right. Um. And then there's the like, you know, for those that are like starting to know how to draw and paint and then you're, you know, you're, you're kind of like, well, I know how to draw and paint now, but what am I drawing and painting? Right. That's when a lot of the ideas, like some of the cin cinematography things that I'm talking about, um, some of the, uh, the general kind of like, you know, I guess more abstract ideas that are, that are mentioned during streams uh, or even classes, right. It, it gets, you know, like you start catching that a little bit more. Right. And then, you know, oftentimes, even like, even like mid-level artists don't even, don't even do this. Um, and, and I'm still doing this myself. I'm not saying this because I'm some master at it or anything. I'm like, I'm still figuring out what the hell makes me, I guess, different, right? Because really, when, once you get to those higher levels, right, of, of art and design, um, they're not hiring you to be a hand anymore, right? You're not somebody that... Like there's plenty of hands to kind of do like most people can do what you that you know what what a studio is kind of asking them to do right like if it's like hey I need you to do a turnaround most junior level artists can do that um, you, you know there's so many people that can do a lot of those more labor intensive things if you know how to render really well great you know that's that's you know mid to mid to uh, uh junior to mid-level work right just learning how to render because to be a senior level artist that's that's it's way more than that it's like it's so much more than than being i guess somebody that can draw or do things really well right um because the more that 
the more your job makes you think, the higher, the harder it really is because, you know, they're looking for unique solutions. They don't need the same solutions. They need something that is different, right? Um, and, you know, for me, I'm, I'm still figuring that out for myself. But when I, when I tell students, like, you know, go be somebody, you know, go do something, you know, not like be somebody as in like somebody big or anything, but like be a human. Because I think a lot of times we go from like, you know, being people, right, with interests, with hobbies, with things, right? And then you jump into the art field and then now your whole life gets just um, taken over by this thing, right? Like I know I did that a thousand percent, right? Like a lot of my hobbies I dropped, a lot of my, uh, you know, just just things that I did before I was Kenny Vo, the artist, right? Um, I just stopped doing because for one, it was either a waste of time or a distraction or didn't have time for it, Right. Um, because it's, this field is so competitive, you know, it's like disgustingly competitive. And if you're, mm -hmm. if you're not kind of putting your all into it, it can feel like you're, 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 you're like kind of half-assing it, you know, not that you are, or you aren't, but it can feel like it because, you know, you see somebody else staying up 18 hour days doing these crazy things. You're like, shit, you know, or even seeing somebody just outperforming you by a mile, you know, that's when like things get, uh, it can, it can get kind of hard to like, to tell yourself that, hey, yeah, you need a break, you know, cause you know, you're like, well, this person's not taking a break shit. So I won't, you know, or whatever. And, uh, you know, once you kind of get your first job or once you kind of, once you get in, you, it's, it's so important to slow down and get, like be a person again, because, you know, now that you have your first job, most of the time your, your quality bar is probably where it needs to be, right? Not that, it, not that it's going to end there, uh, but you're good enough to actually do stuff now, right? Because if you got hired once to do production work, uh, you can probably work at most productions, right? At most productions that are in a similar scope, right? You know, you won't be, you can't be uh, doing something stylized and expect to work at like Naughty Dog or One Pixel, right? It's, you know, that within the, the same like, gen, like general field that you're doing, if you can do it for one, you can do it for others, right? And so now, right from there, what makes you special? What makes you somebody to hire over uh, somebody else? Because now your competition, your pool is actually getting smaller, right? Because for, for, for those kind of like going from a uh let's say a junior level position to a mid-level position right there's a lot less of those jobs and then from mid-level to senior there's a lot less of those jobs and then from that level to to an art director even less and then there's like one or two creative directors right so the pool gets a lot smaller as you go up and so because you're going up now what is it that you're doing different because you know you might not you know you might not like want to right but when you when you put your resume down for a senior level artist you're competing with artists like me artists like whoever right where they're they're the ones that are in there right it's not it's not it's not like oh yeah you have less experience so you're in a different category it's like no you know i'm fighting with jobs with artists that have like twice the amount of experience as me right and then it's just the way it is um and you have to ask yourself well what is it that I bring to the table? Because those other artists that are have that have twice the amount of experience slash time versus you, um, they're probably better painters, to be honest. They're probably better renderers. You know, they're probably better at most things compared to you. Um, so, it, so how do you how do you maintain job security when everybody in that new category has double the amount of experience as you? You know what I mean? Like, especially if you got to like, let's say a senior role a little bit early, right? Like for me, um, you know, I, I, I got put into a, a, a lead role probably earlier than I probably should have. And then because of that title, I was able to kind of swing, you know, different positions differently, right? Like, I guess I was able to get those a little sooner. And in which case competition be, just was a lot higher, right? And it's not, it's, you know, it, it is what it is, but it's understanding that, well, how do you set yourself apart from some of these artists that have two, three times more experience, you know? And that's really what we're kind of looking for, especially in those higher ends, because a lot of times 
Uh, we they don't care how well you can draw and paint. You know, as long as you're passable, as long as you're good enough, and you meet the requirements, right? There's no difference between you and somebody that's more senior because you know you're doing the same things you can both paint a castle great we need we need someone to paint a castle and you can both do it cool so now who are we gonna hire you know um it's it be, really becomes less about quality than it is about well what's your what's your contribution to this project you know um how how is how is the way you Why are think you special? how are you setting this project apart yeah exactly right because now you're contributing in a bigger way too because now um in a, in a higher level position, more often than not, your voice actually kind of drives a lot of the production, right? So a lot of the art and things that you'll be doing uh, will kind of be the thing that tells all the mid-level and junior level artists what they should and shouldn't be doing, you know? And that's where things kind of, it gets really hard, you know? Yes. Antonio... Uh, with Artwad, I mentored with him a couple years back, very briefly, and he was really harping on like, what is your specialization? What is your thing? And I, I think it was a little early for me because I was still just in skill building. But he was saying like, when he knows artists who get hired at productions that aren't, it's you're not even in the same style, like ballpark. But he says that they get brought on because of their voice. So he said that he's seen a case where someone was kind of like a bubblegum pop character designer. You know, Powerpuff Girls and My Little Pony kind of vibes, but was brought on to something that was in a more young adult fantasy genre. Because they wanted to see how that would drive and mix the vision. And because... And so that person was being sought after because of their unique voice and it wasn't you know it, it didn't have to be crazy one pixel brush kind of stuff to be on a higher fidelity project it was more just about what their ideas were yeah and how they provided something different to the rest of the team yeah that happens so much like i think every production every team has those artists right where they can almost do whatever they want and they'll probably be okay right because i we had an artist like that on one of my projects where um everything that he did looked like the stuff that he does and it's not that the project wasn't in that style it's just um it wasn't quite the style and, you know, we were, you know, us normal people, right? The casuals, uh, we were told like, hey, you know, um, match the style. And then we'd get notes back, match the style. We'd have to like fix things and stuff like that. And this other artist clearly not in style, right? And this stuff gets approved, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And then all, and then, then you start seeing the project shifting towards his style, right? Um, and I'm not like mad or anything about that, but you know, it is, it's just a reality that we have to understand that, um, you know, this, these people, right. These, uh, these, these productions, right. They, they're, they're, they're driving a lot of those projects, um, because they have a very particular kind of look and feel that, you know, everyone's resonating with or whatever. And they're the kind of, let's say like North star of the project, but you know, what they're doing, uh, kind of transcends the more common things that we that we're that you know we're that we're us normals are are doing essentially you know and it's a um you know the more you have to offer uh the more that you're able to uh uh i guess do that for a project the more valuable val valuable they you are right because if you're somebody that uh just kind of does what's necessary right what's like you know you're, you're just good at the thing that you know uh, that they need you to do um the price tag that you command probably isn't as high but somebody that like you know i guess um kind of does that for a project you know it they're probably making like three or four times the amount that uh, a normal artist in that category is making you know what I mean? Um, just because, you know, they're, 
they're the medicine, you know, they're, they're the, uh, they're the cure to whatever this project needs, you know, this, I, I, I'm sick and I need medicine. Right. And this person is doing that for us. And, uh, that's the kind of, that's the kind of artist that, you know, you, we, or we're trying to hit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yo, Kylo Legend. Sorry, I just I just saw the uh, the YouTube uh, YouTube chat. <clears throat> what are your favorite senior artists, dude? I don't know, man. I don't know if I know any senior artists. I mean, I know senior artists, but to say my favorite is go on Art Station, right? Yeah. Yourself. You can't say yourself, man. That's not cool. That's not. Uh, that's not. That's not culture, man. And even then, dude, half the time I'm looking at my work, I'm like, nah. This kid needs some work. This kid. Uh, yeah. This kid's got a got a ways to go. Yeah, and you'll make it someday. I know someday. <laughs> I, I believe in you. <laughs> Just Hopefully. keep trying, man. Hopefully, dude. I, I tell myself that every day, man. It's, it's, it's the only way I get out of bed, bro. <laughs> senior level artist? Do I know any? I mean, I know some seniors, but like, I don't know. Aww. Dude, I know I talked about him last time I was in here with you, but Jorge Jimenez, the comic artist. Oh, yeah. Just ridiculous. Just, yes. I don't know that there's somebody who does it better. Like, that guy is practically like a god among us. Just, it's unreal. Dude, you don't, uh, you don't subscribe to, uh, who is it again? Who's the, the big Captain America chest? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Rob Liefeld. Yeah, Rob Liefeld? Yeah, come on, man. Oh, <laughs> Rob doesn't do it better bro my boy rob put some respect on his name dude he made his place in history <laughs> yeah, yeah. i mean he made deadpool was, uh... oh was that him yeah. that was him yeah that, that was yeah him. well it's it's debated debated that, oh shit There's, yeah uh... apparently he didn't maybe he didn't actually do it there's been like a lawsuit or something oh crazy damn. You know? i haven't looked into it though i'm just slandering him I don't know where. Uh, yeah, we don't slander <laughs> Rob Liefeld here, bro. We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. This is a pro Rob Liefeld. <laughs> yeah, pro show. Rob Liefeld. Rob, if you're listening to this, I'm Team Rob, bro. <laughs> yeah, definitely is. I know. We love you. We love you. If he's uh, if you're around, man, let me know. <laughs> Bring him on. Yeah. Bring him on. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's cool. Like um, looking and for for every, like it's uh, I I, I talked I talk to a lot of students just in my day to day just because of classes and things like that, and like it's always like oh yeah you know I really like these artists and it's always like the most popular artists whoever whoever you know at the time right whoever's famous whoever's big whoever's got the most followers whatever, but like. Like look, and I'm not saying uh, Jorge Jimenez is, is small by any means, but there's a lot of like, um, you know, I guess what needing to look around, right? Because there's like, there's always like, oh yeah, I really like this super famous concept artist. I'm like, that's really cool, man. And like, what kind of art are you like looking at? Like, oh, just the just the concept art stuff, you know, just that. And I'm like, you know concept artists are really good at one thing right or a couple things but after that we're trash at most things art just being real with you composition trash uh you know like freaking figures trash um because you know we just we focus so heavily on design right? we're not the best at a lot of different things um because you know and and, and every art um Every, every art kind of like focus is like that, right? Like animators focus on a very particular thing. Design skills, not that good, right? And it's not their fault, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, it is what it is. Um, and I think with with artists, like really look at the other things, like look at, um, look at other artists because, th you know, that's how you actually get good. If you actually ask, like some of these artists that you're looking at, that are really good at something right we're like wow this person is really good at figure drawing this person is really good at color ask them who they're looking at chances are they're not looking at somebody in their same field chances are they're looking at somebody else and, you know if you get if you want to get really good 
at uh, you know composition. I don't know. Pick up a camera. Look at cinematographers, right? Look at look at photographers, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, if if you want to get really good at gesture drawing, you know, look at animators. They're really fucking good at it, right? Because they understand what what to look for in a figure in those instances. If you're trying to, you know, look at someone that has really good anatomy understanding, fine artists are really good at it because that's all they fucking do. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, it's because like, it's like, oh, who's your favorite artist? It's like, oh, it's Finney McManus or it's it's Irie Pan. It's like, yeah, they're great artists. They're amazing. I'm not shit talking them at all, but they're only good at, at a, a, a few things. Right. Expand that expand that reach look further look outside of entertainment design as a whole because there are so many artists out there that are really good that are really good at a very particular thing um and if you can like fuse that into you right it makes you special right now if you're somebody that um you know has that different look or you're looking for that different look usually it's because you're not referencing enough you're not referencing outside of the same circle so you're kind of like you know regurgitating a lot of you know the same things if you're if your work looks very basic concept arty right um chances are that's all you probably look at right and it's not bad but you know clearly not gonna be the the ticket out you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. cool that's a very good point there's um honestly, go ahead you're saying i was gonna say honestly my i think like one of my favorite artists right now is like uh like i don't know if you know like hiroshi yoshida yes but woodblock prints that is the shit like i just it's like my favorite it's so good but it's like if i had just like i'm thinking about it now if i just like stayed in the realm i never would have discovered like so much beautiful art you know yeah it's not even just like a referencing for your personal workers like it's just like the world has so much cool stuff and you're like missing out if you're just staying in one staying in your lane like that you know yeah dude and that's that uh that artist we referenced for blue eye samurai right like because you know there was a a wood blocky you know type of type of uh approach that we were kind of going for and so a lot like the uh, my production designer when he hopped on um he was like oh yeah we, we you know we're looking at this kind of stuff and so we just all just looked at the work we you know some of us did some studies some of us kind of you know went in and just kind of like copied it or whatever you know and a lot of it is it's like learning how to get something unique because a lot of the unique stuff comes from other things the reason it's unique is because this space hasn't seen it it's not that it didn't exist before you know Mm -hmm. like spider-verse isn't unique in the comic sphere they've been doing screen tones and effects you know that's what a comic book is but animation not so much right and that's kind of where um you know a lot of these uh a lot of these cooler ideas they come from other things and we just have to find out how to mix them in a really cool way that's why like uh for example when i'm talking about uh for those that don't know in my like entertainment design classes or um in my uh i guess more thinking level classes i'm always like oh yeah what's your like 30 favorite things what, what what are things that you just enjoy doing right it's fucking it's, it's eating you know if it's taking walks like how do you get that how do you get that uh, understanding or that that idea into your work you know because it makes you special it's not that it's unique to the world it's unique to our space and that's really all we're trying to look for you know Oh, Kylo, for uh, how do you get such clean lasso lines? Um, so, pro tip, I'm on the free form lasso tool, or just a regular lasso tool, right? The, the non-polygonal one. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it doesn't work on polygonal, but I know it works on the regular lasso tool. If you, like, you know, just kind of draw with it, right? It's more organic. You'll kind of get, like, this kind of jaggedy shape because, generally speaking, our hands aren't like that. Mine aren't. Maybe yours are. But, you know, it's not perfect. And so what I'll do is... Um, when I'm drawing with it, if you hold down the alt key on your keyboard and let go, or like let go of the mouse side, but I'm still holding it down alt, it'll turn into a polygonal lasso tool. And then when I want to start drawing again, it'll kind of stay organic, right? So, um, and you can kind of like add on to it by holding holding shift. And then if you hold alt, you'll kind of get rid of stuff or you'll, you know, you'll, 
you know, you kind of cut out of it. If you hold shift and alt, you only keep whatever's left, you know, stuff like that. There's a whole like system behind it with the modifier keys. Just kind of learn how to mess with it and you'll kind of start getting uh, pretty used to it, right? It starts becoming a lot easier. So, but, uh, but yeah, that's how I'm doing that. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I was having a um, conversation with some people where uh, we're talking about, um, I guess, like, I guess what's important for art, right? Because I, I, I teach other classes and I was teaching my, my uh, uh, one of my more beginner level classes and I was talking to them about just like, you know, the importance of really learning how to think, you know? Um, I think a lot of times we get so tunnel visioned and for those that are like more beginner, right? Like this is, this is obviously this is something to, to, to think about. It's not something that you need to actively kind of pursue quite yet. Right. Because, um, well, I guess we'll, 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 let's talk about it first and then I'll kind of do the preface after that. Like when we first start, there's a lot of like, oh, you got to get good at drawing. You got to get good at painting. And I actually, like I went to a convention recently. I was, I was tabling at a convention in Arizona. And um, I, I have students come up to me and they're like, oh, yeah. So, you know, as a professional artist, what do you think is the most important thing that you should learn? Right. Um, and my advice is like twofold. Right. It's, it's always like get good at drawing and painting because that's what we need you to do. You need to be able to draw and paint. But that's half of it, right? That's, that is just 50% of the student journey. Because when you learn how to draw and paint, congratulations, you are like a intermediate, intermediate advanced, probably intermediate though, right? Um, you know, you're probably just okay. Um, but after that, I always tell them like, you know, but remember that art is about your experience, right? You're trying to create or tell people about your unique unique lived experience right because that's what art is um you're you're seeing life through my eyes right uh, or, or or i'm you're seeing what i want you to see kind of thing right so i i kind of tell them these things like i like we had i had this i had this person come up to the table uh this past week and they, they went hey so you know what, what's the most important thing and i said oh yeah you know just being yourself you know, finding what makes you, you, right? Drawing from those experiences and showing us that on the page. And she goes, oh, but, but, but more tangible, you know, like, but, but more like, um, you know, like, what's the secret sauce? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I mean, you know, I just kind of gave up and I was like, just learn how to draw, you know, learn how to draw and paint, right? And then, because at the end of the day, it's like, you're not ready for this information yet, right? You're not quite there yet. Um, but it is something where, uh, for everybody at listening, right. You know, learn how to draw and paint. That's the first thing because you can't, it doesn't even matter what you're saying. If whatever you're saying doesn't come out, right. Cause if it doesn't look good, uh, generally speaking, no one's really going to listen, right. Or no one's really going to look at it. Uh, unfortunately. Right. But after a while it comes, you know, you, it, it starts becoming, well, I'm getting good enough to where people are listening but uh, no one really likes what I'm saying. No one, no, I'm not getting enough likes, not getting enough recognition, whatever it is, right? And that's where this idea of really, you know, I guess creating a unique experience for your, you, you know, your, your audience or your, you know, the people looking at your painting essentially, right? It's like, what makes you special? What makes you different? And how are you, how are you saying things, right, in your painting? Because... If you're not actually, if you're creating a painting, this is like, oh, wow. Yeah. It's a cool dude. It's like, yeah, I mean, you could, it's, it's not that that doesn't work. Right. It's just not great. And oftentimes you, you, you'll find that you won't really get that far because it's really easy to do those. Right. Especially in like the more senior level where literally everything they do looks cool. But then, you know, you ever like, you ever, um, you ever see maybe like some artists, like a higher level artist, and they'll be like, they did a thing, like, I don't really like it. And you're like, what are you talking about? That's better than what I could do uh, ever you know, in my wildest dreams, right? It's usually because you're, you're missing something, right? It's you're, you're not seeing, you're seeing the quality. You're not seeing the story. You're not seeing the idea. 
and they're they you know they 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 shit out good paintings right like they they'll they'll trip into a good painting pretty pretty easily um but you know to make something actually worthwhile right that's 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 different right so it's a it's a weird one it's a there's a lot of like there's there's so much focus on 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 just being able to draw and paint and i and i was talking to them about um um, how do you actually kind of move up in, in, in our industry, right? Because we oftentimes think, you know, if I learn how to draw and paint really well, then I'll become a senior. I'll become a whoever, right? Like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll become the art director. I'll become the creative director. Um, that's not really true, right? It's not, it, it, it prob- it's not that it doesn't ever happen. I don't want to say it like that. But generally speaking, the people in leadership positions, right, are oftentimes not the best artists. They don't need to be because that's why they hired you, right? Um, because that's why you exist, right? That's why you work there because you are the good artist, right? Um, so what? Are, like, so why then? Then what are they useful for, right? And it's usually their vision. It's usually their ability to uh, see a a project through, right? Their ability to even produce something or their understanding of what you know certain audiences need. Blah blah blah. This and that. There's something else that they're good at, right? And that's usually not drawing and painting. And, it, you know, especially if you want to become some sort of lead, more often than not, somebody that becomes a lead isn't the best artist either. Um, it's somebody that, you know, or at least shouldn't, uh, or I guess should, somebody that should become a lead isn't always the best artist. It's somebody that knows how to manage, right? Somebody that knows how to, like, like actually, you know, help artists you know because oftentimes uh um you'll you'll kind of like you know i guess come across those those art directors or whatever that are just bad at their job right they're like they're 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 bad at feedback or they get angry or you know whatever and it's usually because they could probably do it better because they were somebody that were like that was like hired to to i guess um you know they, they were hired at the place and they stayed long enough and then they got promoted right it's usually what happens but the people that are truly good at uh, leadership roles are oftentimes the more uh, the artists or the people that are more uh, emp- uh, that have more empathy, right? That, that really understand how to get the uh, best performance out of their artists, right? Because you're not you're no longer, um, I guess, in charge of creating the art, right? You're in charge of creating the scenario for the artist to create the art, right? Like you're you're in charge of like giving them the correct reference right kind of guiding them and and pointing them in the right direction and setting it up so they know what to do right Um, because your job now isn't to do the painting it's to set up somebody else to do the painting right it's it's like indirectly you're painting right and that's what you want to get good at it's like having vision understanding how to how to how to lead somebody how to how to guide a, a lower level artist right if you're ever ha- if you've ever had trouble explaining something to somebody right uh, or, or not not ever right everyone has that trouble it's if you're constantly having trouble explaining something to somebody that's where it gets kind of weird where it's like they just don't get it let me just do it you know what i mean it's like mm-hmm. you're probably you're probably shit at explaining things right uh, but when someone gets it you know when someone's like oh yeah you said the thing and i totally got it right it's like, you know, that's usually a good sign. It's usually like, oh yeah, okay, cool. They're 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 getting what I'm saying. They're getting what I'm putting out there, right? Dope. Cool, we're moving. So this is uh this takes a while. This uh like we're we're kind of like semi in the rendering phase because I already have the lighting phase kind of like established right we kind of did a little bit of it last week i kind of get it got it in that right kind of tone and then with a little bit earlier this week i'm starting and now i'm starting to like clean up my forms a little bit uh, i'm going to start kind of like just kind of finessing a lot of like the set dressing stuff as we as we kind of talk but uh but yeah it's uh it's getting there Boom. cool part about all this check so as long as you're doing like a couple pieces and it looks okay you can then start taking pieces and just start running with it dude easy peasy let's go that's cheating (laughs) 
No, dude, I painted it all by hand. I don't know what you're talking about. I had a few fun movies I watched with my mom while she was here. We saw Alien and Aliens. Nice. Nice. Never seen those before, man. Did Never? Like Word? That's crazy. I know, dude. Don't yeah, say that in public, dude. Yeah. They're gonna... Yeah, never seen them. And they were good. I, I can see why. <laughs> I can see. Maybe they had... They, they were onto something. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I can't believe, like, uh, just how well the map paintings and the lighting in the first Alien hold up today. Oh yeah, the dude. movie looks so sharp, crazy. And it's, you know, it's funny because like you really don't see the alien that often, you know, like, um, especially in uh, Alien, like the first one, where like I, I think I think you see it like a like a couple times, and even then, those couple times it looks okay, but it's the ones where you see parts of it or like, uh, where like um, it's kind of like obscured, and you know what I mean. Like, those look sick, right? And it's, like, usually, like, a limitation. Because like, I think, like, a lot of movies nowadays, it's like, oh, yeah, we, we have the CG to do it, so let's do it, right? And it's, like, you know, unless it's, like, amazing, unless it's, like, the best CG we've ever seen, generally speaking, it's, like, I don't want to say underwhelming, but it's, like, it's, a, it's all right, you know? It's, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, I'm glad yeah, you yeah. got to experience that. Oh man, I just, I couldn't believe it. Just how much, and you know, there's kind of that new wave of, of filmmaking where it's like everyone's got these, these amazing ultra low light cameras. And so nobody shoots with uh, lights, lamps anymore at night. Yeah. So we just got these dark gray scenes. Ugh. And then you go back and look at Alien and it's like things are at night, but it's got light blasted exactly where where ridley wants you to look and yeah. it's crystal clear even though it's dark and foreboding and moody <laughs> My God, that's just i miss i you know wish we still had that going on because it looks excellent even today it um, it's very interesting like um because so for the for yeah for the for you guys here like you remember my classes where uh um i will uh if a week one, it's always like, uh, I, guess, I, I, I think except for Lauren, but um, for, for week one, we always do film studies, right? For, for world building two. And it's interesting because the people that do the old movies, right? The people that kind of do older movies, their graphic reads tend to be a lot better. Like it's a little odd. Like it's not always the case, uh, but it's you can always see a huge difference between people that just do modern movies and people that kind of include some of those older movies, especially people like uh, Akira Kurosawa or like, um, you know, movies like Citizen Kane and stuff like that, where, you know, they're super graphic with it, right? It's just like, because, you know, that's that's all they had. That's all they could do um, because uh, anything else and it just wouldn't work, right? And so, um you know when seeing these old movies like they had so many limitations with technology but they you know they just made it happen and it's it's seeing some of those old movies it's so cool like the way they handle a lot of that it's just uh um it's so creative and it's cool because you can take a lot of that a lot of that thinking and apply it to you know stuff that stuff that we do right stuff that we do nowadays because it's the same thought process we're just creating images they're creating sequential images that need to be kind of seen and understood but it's still it's still an image that uh has like compositional rules and you know all sorts of stuff like that so also saw seven nice really good mm. oh you haven't seen seven before have you heard the the meme no. before no because i threw that meme in the uh in the discord like a couple days ago the what's in the what box mean? meme Oh, oh really? <laughs> That's a meme. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, because uh, okay. I think someone was talking about uh, uh, blowing up my coffee shop, and then uh, <laughs> and uh, somebody, yeah, because it's because it was next to his, and um, you know, he was like, he put a box out, and I was like, oh yeah, and then I, I threw the uh, what's in the, the box, box meme out. What's in the box? Yeah, what's in the box? <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> do so. These movies are important. Like uh, segueing into like. 
I guess something more tangible for for like people, right? Like, um, I every job that I get, it's always without fail. It's always like, oh yeah, you know that one scene from this movie? You know, it's always like, oh yeah, like this scene or or like this. Like I I think, like I got one where it was like, oh yeah, like at when I was at Paramount, they're like, oh yeah, um. We want this kind of mining cart scene, right? It's like, oh, like like the mining cart in Indiana Jones. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And if you've never seen it before, you're like, what the fuck? You know, like what what like what do you mean? You know, like it's hard it's hard to like it's hard to know what the hell these people are talking about. But when you um uh when you uh, uh like I watch these movies, right? It it make it puts everything in context, and now you're you're speaking the same language. Right, which is really cool. Like now you're communicating at a, a, in a in a deeper level than just language, just English. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's. I think every job that I've had, they always they always do that. Every art director, especially our older people, um, uh, every older kind of lead that I that I communicate with, they talk in movies. You know, they they say, oh, it's like this scene plus this scene, or it's like this plus this. And like I'll, I have students now where I'm like, hey, do you guys watch movies? And um, they say usually it's like a big like just no, They're like no, we don't really do that because it's too long or whatever. I'm like, mm. I mean, do you want to work in entertainment? But that's something else. <laughs> <laughs> Lame. But um, yeah, it's they. That's all they talk about. It's it's like, and and you know the big ones like Star Wars pops up a lot. You know, Fifth Element pops up a lot. Indiana Jones pops up a lot um, because you know these people that are that that are in charge now grew up with those movies. You know, it's like uh, because the movies that we grew up with, right? Or uh, I guess we as in uh, we have a, we have a varying range of ages right now. But you know, there is uh, there's a there's a there's a group of people like every generation, like millennials, Gen Z, stuff like that. They all grew up with certain movies. And certain experiences, and when we try to communicate with other people, we're, we're usually trying to, you know, use those references. It's like because it's not it's past words, right? It's like it's oh, it's like that scene from Star Wars, right? That that part, you know, this thing. Um, and when people like when you say that to somebody, you're communicating differently because now you know it's different. And it's like oh yeah, I, I see what they mean, you know. Um, and yeah, for for artists, you know, if you're young young or even even currently working like just watch movies like i promise you the more movies you watch the better your career is going to be like it, it doesn't it, it sounds weird it feels weird at first um but it really does make a huge difference it's it's everything it's um just being able to communicate better and then also also learning how to reference better right that's a big thing um you know where to pull things and now when when there's a scene where like hey because usually they'll ask like in a in a production or whatever they'll be like um they'll be like oh yeah you know like uh we need this we need this scene that kind of says this says that or whatever you're like oh yeah like in indiana jones there's a scene that does this and you're like oh shit there you go you know it's like you're you're kind of like you're able to communicate with them just on a such a such a high level and people that can do that dude you're worth so much your, uh, your ability to communicate just like increases, you know. So. You should actually watch watch them too, not half watch. Yeah, like you can't just turn it on the side because a lot of it, because like I think for me, like uh, even even me, like for example, like I, I've said this before where, where I've done that 100 movie challenge for the year. You know, obviously so I can't actively like look at the screen every single time, uh, but I will pick which movies get get my attention like for example like you know american pie not getting my full attention right like <laughs> i'll turn it on in the side and then we'll kind of hopefully experience it i mean i have seen it don't get me wrong <clears throat> but like dune yeah i'm like setting aside time to watch that or like you know uh star wars yeah I'll probably you know lord of the rings um you fucking seven you know um requiem for a dream don't watch that watch it but yeah, you know, don't. <laughs> don't don't watch it. Watch it. Just <laughs> have it on. To say you watched it. It's sad. <laughs> it's the. It's like a great movie I'd never want to watch again. Um, Grave of the Fireflies is a good one. <laughs> Another depressing one. Nice. 
<laughs> makes you uh it's like so good that i'm never gonna see it again <laughs> yeah God, there's a lot of those it's kind of crazy but yeah it 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 dro- it like it, it, it informs you because now you're different now you're somebody that like knows things you know because now when if if a director can talk with you when again like if if they if they're able to communicate with you at a high level right and there's no communication issues i mean i'm not saying that you start becoming a favorite but like you know what i mean like you ever like you know you ever have trouble talking with somebody like you know foreigners is a thing right where um you know their english isn't as good or whatever it's not their fault it's just they don't know the language um it's it's difficult right it's not you, you, you're not mad at them, but you are frustrated, right? You, you can't get your ideas across. It happens, right? Um, well, even though we're speaking English in a production setting, right? If you don't know what the director is talking about, if they're a director, right? If they're somebody that makes movies, right? They probably, you know, safe to say they watch movies. I don't know. Just a, just a, just a hunch, right? And so... You know they're probably talking to you in those kind of things they're they, because they probably you know love that shit right uh because surprise they do it um and so whenever you're able to talk with these people in in their language in a, in a way that they understand there's zero friction and you for whatever reason you start becoming somebody that gets called on more often than not right just because uh you know something that the others don't because even though, right, we're not trying to play favoritisms in studios, right? There's just artists that, that are able to kind of, you know, get it. And there's artists that aren't, right? It's, it's not, you know, it is what it is. Some people mesh better than others. Like I've had, I've worked with, uh, with leads that I just didn't mesh with that well, right? It's not, it's not anybody's fault. It's just, we just grew up differently, right? And uh, then I've had other, uh, other uh, uh, leads and stuff like that where we really got each other right we're for you know we're just clicking you know we're 100 percent. like things i said like i got it they need to say half a sentence and we're done you know and it's just it's it's a it's a funny thing but the your ability to communicate really does become super important um at the at the at these higher levels you know that makes sense i think to like seeing the batman um, how inspired it is by seven and Mm. that was you know like a key point when he was talking that through with people that, like this has got to feel a certain way if the notes that were hit in seven is like we want to hit that vibe or even just you know like having your mind blown seeing the the intro to chainsaw man and like how the the opening every single shot is a famous movie shot from like the 90s mm-hmm. and they because they speak film and and like you've said kenny it's like you, you can steal them compositions aren't uh, copyrighted so you just use it slap your character on yeah bam if you have a kick kick that chainsaw man opening. yeah right have you, seen that? Have, you, have you seen the the comparison clip how close it is i haven't is, is it pretty close yeah, I mean, it's like straight up ripped from, uh, like, uh, what's the one by the guy who does, it's not, well, there's Kubrick in there, there's the one with the, 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 the briefcase with John Travolta, why is it? Um, uh, Pulp Fiction? Yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, hold up. All sorts of things. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it up. I'm about to pull it up right now. Edit later. Uh, Chainsaw Man opening movie reference. This one, yeah, side by side. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. It's all the director's favorite movies. And... There you go. <laughs> Big Lebowski's really good too. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. There's um, uh, there was a. Uh... Dude, look at that. Episode 19. It's live now. Check it out. Anyway. <laughs> um, I need to see uh what is it? Uh Soka. Um Akira. Where is it? Uh 
Oh, I'll be a Kira shot. You keep getting redone. Yeah. It was sick and nope, Jordan Peele. I didn't see that coming, honestly. I was watching it the other day. I was like, it just came out of nowhere. I was like, oh my god, that's the thing from the thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was so wild. He did the thing from the thing. He did the thing. He, no way. Like, that's the thing. All right, no that's way. Sick. That's sick. Yeah, I saw this thing where uh, they just did like it was it was shot for shot when uh, it was in the Ahsoka movie and then with uh, uh, Kurosawa's movie. <clears throat> There's a whole video on it, but uh, blocked. Oh, it's because I'm uh, uh, using VPN right now. Son of a dude, I hate uh, I hate Reddit. Anyway, <laughs> but you can see it here. And it's like, it's just like shot for shot, right? And it's just like inspired by, right? Because you can't copyright composition. It's just placement. It's just things. It's not, it's not that big a deal, you know? If you're like cutting things out of it, yeah, that's a problem, you know? But it is something where even like uh, there was this controversy um, uh, recently where, um, God, I forgot who it was. Somebody was, some music artist was, was uh, accusing some smaller music artist of stealing, no, a bigger music artist of stealing, uh, their their things and stuff uh, the not the not the mu not the actual music it was the music video um, mm. um anyway it was like it's like yeah i mean you know these compositions look really close but i mean you guys could both also be referencing the same things you know it's like <laughs> yeah. it's yeah i think even like if you break it down further i think uh yo jimbo is even inspired by uh like a lot of Western films. Oh yeah. There so it's go. like who who really who really did what here? <laughs> like Oh yeah. Is it, is it really that big of a deal? You know. That's a thousand percent what it is, man. It's like there it's it's there's so many different uh um the the, the references go so deep. It's so deep. And mm. it's just, you know, I mean, as long as you're doing it honestly, right? If you're doing it in a in a you know, I guess a uh, creatively correct way. I mean, you're going to be fine, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, you know it's... what I think does it is um, it being part of a larger project. Yeah. Because when it's a one-off, when it's a piece of concept art and you go and you rip something and people can tell, you're like, hey, you just did the thing. You just did the thing for the thing and that's your piece. But I, I think everyone talks about it so positively when they see it in film or in books is because like oh that was a reference to this thing but it's supporting a much larger whole that is is a unique work from the creator yeah like when it's just blatant theft where it's like you know like i guess the uh the the purpose of using it was because you just took it right because you just used it yeah that's one thing and even then like i don't even think that's in the it's it's a, i feel that's in a gray area to be honest where it's like because you still can't copyright placement right um but yeah you're right where it's like if it's in a uh, if it's in a movie it's part of like a bigger thing and it's usually um i guess looked at in a pretty i would say positive kind of way right just because it's not it's not the same movie they're not even talking about the same things they're just referencing a certain part that says you know a certain thing right yeah or it's like transformative like uh like I mean, I keep going back to Kurosawa because I keep, I've been like watching so much of his stuff recently, but like, uh, <laughs> like he, he, like I think Ran and so many of his, uh, like Ran is inspired by, or like directly uh, King Lear from like Shakespeare. And that was like taking the influence pretty much exactly, but just transforming it into like a different context. Very cool stuff. Nice. Dang, dude, Lauren, you're in the you're in the old movie space. You know, I I will admit, I I do have a hard time getting into old movies. Um, I'm not like immediately, uh, I guess, excited to watch it right off the bat, right? But mm -hmm. when I do watch it, like when I you know sit like you know I guess when I finally like kind of muster up the the strength, I won't say it like that, but it does take me a second to kind of like get into it. And then once I watch it, I'm like, dude, I should have watched this way earlier. Like, it's always like that, dude. How old are we talking? Like, like 50s and under. 
right? Like, yeah, I'll, I'll watch something from the sixties pretty easily. Um, but it's like, once it, once you hit black and re- black and white realm, right. It's like, yeah, it gets a little bit like not the hard, but I am like, ah, let's watch something else. You know what I mean? Or something. Yeah, else. yeah I agree. <laughs> I'm like, man, I got like 200 other movies to watch. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll hold off on this one for a second. <laughs> <laughs> But I never regret it. I will say that. Like once I once I once you're in, dude, I'm in, bro. Like, and it just takes me like just a couple seconds to like kind of muster up that strain. <laughs> Ian says uh, Satoshi Kon more. movies are so inspiring, especially Prepare. Yeah, like, dude, a lot of those, um, a lot of those like uh, '90s and '80s like uh, anime movies and stuff like that, like Satoshi Kon movies a lot. Like, dude, they get trippy, man. They get like, they get they get out there sometimes. <clears throat> but it's cool seeing that. Like, once you know, once you like understand um, those ideas, right? And then you see it in other movies, like, oh shit, you know? It's like it's really it's really like I don't know. It's really nice to kind of get all that, you know? Any more now that uh, modern blockbusters are kind of in the position that they are? It's like going back. A couple decades to when you know the productions weren't being shorted on time and there was a lot of craft going into pre-planning and all of that it's really important to go back and look at those movies but stand the test of time yeah and, dude i'm not gonna lie i hate modern movies now not hate them but generally speaking i don't really like a lot of them it sounds yeah. oh maybe i'm maybe i'm get, turning turning into one of those movie snobs but and like but it's it's feeling pretty dry kind of pretty bleak you know <clears throat> save for the odd blockbuster or the odd a24 that isn't so weird that <laughs> it's like really cool yeah but... <laughs> yeah a- a- a24 be uh it gets wild sometimes <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's a little much for me but yeah All right, let's see. What else we got? So we got 20 minutes, guys. What's the what's the topic? What's the struggles? Oh, man. Um, let's see. How, so you talk a lot about, you know, there's a lot of junior jobs and less senior jobs. I feel like I've never actually really seen that many junior job postings, like, ever. Mm-hmm. Um, like from what I've seen it's actually been the opposite where it's like I always get the feeling that the industry is like super top heavy I guess because I feel like all the job postings I see are for seniors like all the time Mm. I don't know if that's just like I'm looking in the wrong place I don't know (laughs) people or something like that like I don't know what's going on with it yeah I know what you mean like I think when you looked on LinkedIn when you looked on all the sites right it's always like oh senior senior this senior that right like because that's the jobs that are I guess people are currently looking for right what I will say is that a lot of junior roles are filled before they hit that job market, before they hit that job posting. You know what I mean? Like, um, because junior roles are really, not gonna say really easy, but they're pretty easy to fill, right? You just, you hit up any artist and like, yeah, I know a couple of juniors because um, they're in abundance, right? I don't say it like that, but <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> there's a lot of juniors, right? It's, I mean, it is what it is. And so, uh, whenever um, like a studio is like, hey, uh, we're, we're looking for some artists, right? We're looking for some junior artists that need to help out. We'll usually know who, like who, you know, who we're able to call in that instance. You know what I mean? Like, because there's just, it's, it's really easy to most, most people like, because you can hire a junior and a mid-level for those versus like a senior. You're really only getting seniors, right? Um, so the the job it never makes it to the job listing is what i've been seeing you know they uh Mm. they'll hire their interns they'll do like like bigger studios will have like an internship program and then they'll just hire those so you never really see that junior position pop up but there's like 10 of them at that studio you know what i mean and that's kind of like that's a that's a big thing that i've been seeing um and we had a um we had a studio art director uh in one of my classes once and he was saying that um, his studio, they they rather hire. This is this is you know this is him saying it, not me. 
uh, they would rather hire a lot of like junior and mid-level artists because a lot of senior artists kind of come with, uh, he said baggage, right? Um, <clears throat> and usually it really just means like <clears throat> they have a lot of demands or uh, they, they, there's like a, uh, I guess a, a uh, I guess a way of doing things that they're used to doing. And they're, you know, there's a, uh, what I'm assuming is like, you know, they're, I guess, harder to kind of deal with, right? Because senior level artists, they, they understand, I guess, production to a certain degree or, or they're able to kind of do things in a certain way. And so whenever uh, he brought that up, I was like, oh, that's really interesting, you know, because I, I never thought of it that way. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess like it's I mean, technically, that's true. Right. I, I guess even an artist like me, I, I come with my own baggage. Right. I have a I don't say strict, but a very, very heavy lenience on not coming in. Right. Like I'm, I'm a <laughs> I'm a work remote or bust kind of guy and I'm I'm sticking to it like I'm not you know, I, I, I really don't want to go into office. Um, but you know, that's just me. And I guess as a, as a, you know, people hiring, uh, that's, that's probably pretty annoying, right? Because oftentimes it's not even up to them, right? It's not even up to, uh, the leads that, that you're interacting with. It's like a studio head that's making people do that. So it's like, you know, I'm just making their job more difficult, which I mean, I am sorry, but still doesn't change anything. <laughs> So that could be why, obviously, I don't like 100% know, but uh, that's that's what I've seen. It's, it's uh, junior, junior roles, uh, they don't they don't really make it to the job boards because they get filled so quickly. I see. That really so sucks. All the boards. <laughs> you know. What were you saying, Alex? Then it's all the more true about who you know. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like I've been saying that. I... <laughs> okay, so I went full uh, full time freelance back in ju July ish, right? This uh, this past July, right? Uh, so I've been working full time freelance ever since. Um, I have been applying for places, doing cold calls, stuff like that, right? This is the normal, you know, concept art thing, right? Being honest with everybody here. I apply, I, I probably sent my resume out slash emails out for like contract work slash whatever, probably like 50 different people, right? Maybe, maybe like closer to like 30, right? Um, none of those turned out to be anything, right? Um, a lot of it literally is like either, either got completely ghosted where they didn't even respond or I got a, you know, message back um, uh, saying that, oh yeah, we didn't go with your thing or whatever, right? Um, there's a lot of that. Or even like uh, if I was like, you know, cold emailing, being like, hey, available for work. If you're looking for anything, they're like, oh, we're not really looking for, looking for anything right now. Right. A lot of those. But I've had eight or nine jobs <laughs> since then. Right. Since since July till now. Right. Eight or nine different contracts, some long term, some short term. Um, all of it. All of it was through either somebody that i knew or uh a client that i had worked with previously right whether it's like um you know i i, I either worked at that studio with somebody and they you know they they contacted me back or i'd uh you know i'd worked with that artist before which then went into the studio or whatever you know what i mean so applying front door for me has been nothing i haven't gotten anything i don't i don't even know anybody because i've you know some of the artists that i've talked to some of my friends that that are looking for work they haven't applied they haven't gotten anything to the front door either right because you know for one there's like hundreds of thousands of applicants or whatever i don't know, I don't know hundreds of thousands but a lot a lot of people and there's only so many jobs especially right now right where there's you know um if it, you know, if people are uh, noticing, right, there's been a lot of layoffs. So with those layoffs comes a lot of people looking for work. And so, you know, like applying through the front door becomes so damn difficult. Like it's ridiculous because for one, you're even lucky if you get your application read, right? Um, but whenever somebody I know contacts me, right, it's like instant. It's just like, okay, cool. Yeah, we're looking for work. Um, you know, or we need someone to, to work. We're contacting you because so-and-so recommended you or whatever. 
And then we literally just start. It's like a two week, three week process at most. And most of the time it's like paperwork that's taking forever. Um, but when I apply through the front door, it's disgusting. It's just like, I, you know, I'm like, am I even capable of finding work? You know, <laughs> like you, you have these doubts where you're like, am I even any good? Like, cause fucking like, how am I, how do I have these credits? How do I have this, this level of experience? And like, I'm not even getting a call. You know what I mean? That's like, um, it's really odd. And uh, I can't stress this enough. It's like, you know, you really got to fucking put yourself out there somehow, especially in the beginning, because you don't know who's watching. You don't know who's looking. And having somebody vouch for you is huge. It's I don't want to say it's everything because you know even if even if they know you and you suck they just know that you suck so you know let's 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 make that clear right it's there's a level of people that you got to know or you know there's a level of um i guess uh notoriety that you need to have but it needs to be a good thing right people need to need to know you in a good way because i know plenty of artists that are bad and yeah, I know them, but I wouldn't recommend them because I can't, right? It's just, it's just not, that's just not how that works. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, it's like as, as, a, as, a, as an artist, as, as somebody that like has to constantly look for work as a, as a freelance artist, like just, just being real with everybody here, like it's, it's really hard, right? It's really hard to find work. Um, and I guess trying to do it on your own makes it so much harder right it's so much harder it's already difficult as it is um but you know if you're if you have a good reputation if you if you do your work uh you you know what i mean like people will vouch for you and it, it just makes things a lot easier you don't know when it's going to happen it's something where you have to do it out of the goodness of your heart right you have to be a <laughs> decent person to be a decent person because you don't know when something's gonna happen like i made a friend in 2014 20 no 2015 it didn't pay off until 2022 you know and it's not that i'm not that i like did it in in a uh in a friendship kind of like i didn't i wasn't friends with him because of the work but i mean that i mean you would die of starvation if you if you were like planning the long game on that one. That doesn't make any sense. So you really have to just be a decent person that works hard, does that does their shit, and people notice, right? And eventually it comes back to you. I don't know when, I don't know how, uh, but it does. And you have you just gotta just use that, right? Because you're gonna be applying regardless, right? When you find work, when you're when you're looking for work, you're gonna be applying to the front door, and some of you actually might get that. But um, there's a higher chance when there's a lot more people kind of on your your side of the ring, kind of out, like rooting for you. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Makes it very impressive that Alex just happened to get into to EA out of nowhere. It's so cool. That was the uh, who you know thing again. I was taking a class and a guy liked what I was doing and it paid off. Dude, that's it, man. That's that's real. It's weird. And you never know. And like, like no, nobody here is like this, right? Because, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you guys always did your work and, you know, always showed up. I mean, <coughs> hence why you're here now. But right. Like, you know, like when you're when you're in a class, right? There's always, there's always people that just kind of do half of the work and there's always some sort of excuse, right? And like, even as a teacher, for me, right? For everybody listening now, listening in the future, if you ever take my class, just remember, I don't really care what the excuse is. You know what I mean? Just being real with you. Like, you don't really have to tell me to be completely honest. But <laughs> it's just something where one, one time, not a big deal. You know, it happens, right? Uh, you overslept, you did a thing, you know, whatever, right? It's, like, it's cool, man. Like, I'm, I'm pretty chill about it. If it's an every week thing, you got, you got, you got to like, you got to keep that, you got to keep that in check. Cause I mean, at this point, right, we know it's not the, ex it's, it's not what's happening. You know what I mean? Like I've had people like, 
like in my classes, I, I had I had a student like lie to me about like like what happened to their files, and I'm like, I mean, you really think I can't tell what what's going on here? You know what I mean? Like you, like you know what I mean? Like I get paid to do this. You you understand that, right? Um, and it's like it's like why would you just, just you know what I mean? Like I, th I things happen. I get it. I, I truly do. Um, but if it constantly happens that's where the issues really lie right where it's like and it's not even like i don't even care that much to be you know like yeah if you you know if you didn't turn something in fine if you didn't fine whatever um because it's about you right it's about your your performance it's about your skill level right um because if it's, it's not that i didn't do the assignment you know what i mean well i mean i didn't but it's my assignment so whatever right um but you know, it really, it doesn't matter whether, whether you do for, to me, it doesn't matter whether you did it or not. Uh, because at the end of the day, right. If, if the, if the class has a grade, like one of my, one of my classes that I teach makes me grade, grade my students, or even a class where I don't grade students. Right. Um, it doesn't actually matter to me whether you did it or not. Right. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that has to perform, um, at a place. You're the one that has to do the work. So, you know, it's like it doesn't actually matter to me, right? Whether you do it or not, um, you know. Obviously, there's always there's always reasons, right? And I and I, and I get that. I truly do. Um, but most of the time, doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, it's because as long you you just got to make sure that you learn the topic, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not gonna you're not gonna get you're not gonna be able to get away with without learning it, you know. Because like, I had a coworker that really avoided certain fundamental skills and then when we were working together it came to haunt him forever and as as uh, like as long as long as we were working together and even seeing some of the stuff outside i'm just like yeah you probably should have addressed some of those skills you know what i mean <laughs> you probably should have did those things that we were supposed to be doing in school because you don't just magically learn it you know if you're bad at perspective um you're just gonna be bad at it you know what i mean like you, you you're not you don't all of a sudden get good because you've been avoiding the topic you know um and it just it just keeps going that way and that's where um you know you just gotta just gotta suck it up and just figure it out because it doesn't take that long it never does you ever like for for you guys here right how how long were you actually bad at something before you kind of got okay with it. I'm not saying you need to be the best in the world at it, but like to be okay at it, it takes like a month. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't take that long. Like I'm not saying you're going to be blowing minds, right? But if you were, let's say you're a bad at hands and you did hands eight hours a day, five days a week, right? Just a normal 40 hour work week, um, like a, you know, like a normal professional, right? And you did hands for 40 hours a week, for the whole month i mean by the end of it i'm not i'm not saying you're freaking line decker but you're at least better than a normal student you know what i mean and you ask these artists like at like talk to some of these people like nathan faux right like at, like he's really good at painting and then you ask him and then he goes oh yeah i did it a lot and you're like oh shit yeah that's right you know that, that is a thing you know <laughs> because we, um, him and, uh, Sam, like, uh, I took his class with Sam Mitch lab and I've taken a class with Nathan Fox and they both told me the same thing, right? That me specifically, they just said it in the class where they just did a lot of studies, right? Nathan Fox has the, has the, like, he has like one of his images where he did the same window scene from his, his office or from wherever in DreamWorks looking out and there was like a hundred of them, Right. And it's like, have you even done a hundred paintings? Not not even to mention studies, you know. And then Sam Mitchlab, he said he did the same thing. He said he he had a he said he had a uh, a VCR um, that when you pause the movie, it only paused for five minutes because this is back in the day or whatever, right? Um, and he said that he had five minutes, and he would just paint as fast as he could, right? He'd just paint like quick thumbnails because he only had five minutes before the, the tape would start again. And uh, he just did that a whole bunch of times. And then guess what? He's fucking good. You know what I mean? It's weird. It's weird how that happens, you know? But um, it's like just if you're bad at something, just 
just trying out for a little bit. You know, I could probably use that advice too, to be honest. But like, it is, it's, it's not easy, but it is simple, you know? So much of it is just the sheer repetition and muscle memory. Yeah. To get decent at it, you don't have to be amazing, right? Because, you know, the, to, to be somebody like at a super high level, you know, that takes that takes some time, right? That takes a, a level of, um, you know, dedication and effort that, you know, is, a, is above normal, right? Uh, but to get good enough to pass student level, it takes like one or two months, you know, it, it, as long as you're learning correctly. If you're going about things mindlessly, that's the issue, right? That's where you're like, mm -hmm. you're just kind of going through the motions. You're kind of just like, you know, just um, just rendering things just because, you know, we, I think we see this a lot. There's a, uh, especially like with, like, I, I see this, I don't say it like with this, but like, but, but with plain air artists, artists that primarily do plain air, um, I see it a lot where they only do the one thing, right? Where it's like, they just do like quick studies of plain air. So they never like adapt past that. Like not, obviously not, not all of them do that. I'm not calling out all of them, but there are some that I'm like, you should probably do some, try doing some concepts, you know, you should try doing some things from imagination because it's probably going to help you, you know, because, but what they see online is that their favorite artists are constantly doing plain airs. You see Zach Retz constantly doing study. You see people like uh, like um, uh, Mike McCain always doing studies. Artists like Tiffany Meng always doing studies, right? But that's because they're at their level. That's they're 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 there now. You're not them, right? And you know, like mix it up. You do some studies for a couple months or whatever, and then do some finishes. Do some other things because that's really what. You need to be able to do you need to have a range of skills not just one right because yeah i can play in air but i can also design i can also paint i can also draw you know i can do a bunch of different things that kind of make me a production level artist i'm not you know i'm not like amazing or anything but i am qualified to work in most productions right you know once it gets a little 3d heavy maybe not so much but you know we don't need to talk about that you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> I've been satisfied some with um, spent the last few weeks since getting laid off just doing figures and studying comic book pages and already it's I, I've gotten better at posing them for like what I'm calling intent instead of just having like here's an understanding pose where now the hip is changed this way you know like a design pose yeah it's like I I am having a better time posing a figure with foreshortening with flow for composition and it was pretty cool to, to sketch some stuff today and be like oh dang it's like that each of these could be a banger it's like if i if i you know follow through on them and isn't that wild i think like yeah. like you know i'm at the level now i'm not like saying i'm amazing by any means but Every painting that I do has the potential to be a, a good painting, right? Like, not great, right? It's not like the best thing I've ever seen. But I can save basically every painting that I that I do now, right? Because, you know, a, a, after a while, you just know how to, how to do paintings. It's not a mystery anymore as to how I make a painting, right? Because, you know, I do it for demos, I do it for class, I do it for work. So there's a level of consistency that I, that I have. And, like... Once you do that, like, it's crazy because you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like, um, like, for example, I think every demo that I've done for the live streams, that, that's not all of them are amazing. Right. But by the end of it, when I say it's, you know, quote unquote done. Right. Um, they're probably at the very least passable. Whether the design is amazing, who knows? But the quality is there. And that's what we that's what you need just generally speaking, you're not going to get there for a, for, for a while, but a lot of it really is like, you just need to be good enough to where, you know, when you paint, everything works out, you know, it's like, you're not praying anymore that the, whatever, whatever you're doing, uh, turns out because, you know, you're, you're good enough to kind of operate with, 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 uh, I don't want to kind of like think like cruise control, but like you can probably do it pretty easily and that's what we need right because 
when 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 you're no longer thinking about uh, I guess constantly creating a good painting, you know now. We can focus on the good stuff. We can focus on the important stuff, right? Which is design, thinking, understanding, all those things, right? Yeah. Sick. It's it's so much of just becoming <clears throat> functional. You spend yeah. years becoming functional so that you can free up your faculties to, to think about the part that matters. Yeah, because if I'm thinking about perspective, if I'm thinking about you know color theory, I'm not thinking about design. I'm not thinking about the important things. And that's those are the big issues right it's like you know because that's what we that's that's the field that we play in you know it's uh we we design we think we create ideas we create experiences and if you're not doing that you're not even playing at the same level that your favorite artists are playing at you know because they don't have trouble you know creating characters creating environments they they just do it like you could they can be half drunk hungover you know, had two hours of sleep and their painting at the very least is going to be foundationally correct. The idea might suck. It might feel generic. That's a whole different topic, right? Um, but, you know, the same reason why every week, you know, we, 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 we do a painting here and it's not like it's, it might not be the coolest painting we've ever seen, right? I'm not, I'm not claiming that the originality is always there with my work, but the quality is always there, right? It, at the very least, I'm not struggling with graphic read. I'm not struggling with, you know, foundational perspective things, this and that. You know, we can talk about design things, but the foundations are there. And I can do this whether I'm super tired. I can do this on my worst days. I can do this on my best days. And as a, as a, what would you say? I can do this all day. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and it's like, as a, as a student, you know, that's kind of what you want to aim for first. You don't have to get there, but you know, you want to start hitting there to where, it's, it's just like talking, right? If you're constantly stumbling across your words, if you're stuttering, if you don't know what you're saying, um, it's, you know, you're not going to effectively communicate. So just learn how to speak first. But then once you do learn how to speak, what are you saying, right? What are the words that you're using to convey an idea, right? So now it's what, I'm, what, it, what, what am I doing with my composition to convey an idea? What am I doing with my design skills to convey an idea, you know? All right. <clears throat> Good talk, guys. I like I like the smaller groups. I think um, I think when uh, when when the groups get kind of big, <laughs> people kind of freak out and they don't like say anything. But uh, cool. I think uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap it up here and then uh, we'll call it a day. Cause I got some uh, I got some packing to do. So anyway. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> All right, guys. So just to kind of break down um, kind of where I was to where I am now, right? Obviously, we're not quite there yet. We're st we're, I'm still working it in. I still have a lot of stuff to do. Um, you'll kind of see, I'll show you how far I take this next week, just like usual. Um, but just kind of like, you know, just seeing where it came from, right? Just a block out with a general understanding. Nothing really that impressive, right? Nothing like, you know, foundationally, it's not that great of a scene. It's just cubes, right? Uh, so from there, I took this and then I started like kind of putting my first strokes down. Like I think a lot of times like this kind of feels like blank canvas syndrome to me where even though it's not blank, there's something there. Um, it does take me a second to kind of like, you know, get my bearings in order, right? It, like just to kind of get my, uh, my thoughts correct. And what I did last week, right? You know, I was really trying to establish this piece right here. I spent a lot of time on this corner, right? And the reason I did that was because, I don't know, something happened, I, I, I threw in a piece and it looked okay. And I was like, ah, it's, it's kind of there, but not really quite there yet. You know, I was kind of messing with some of these cut lines. And then you saw me like finally like kind of get something that was kind of okay. And I started throwing it around. I started putting it in the scene just to kind of get things kind of flowing, right? From there, I spent, you know, probably about three hours earlier today. And then I started, I, uh, I moved into, um, it wasn't this scene. It was this scene without the lights. Um, but, you know, I got into something like this where most of these pieces are actually, you know, it's like not 100% defined, but there's, you know, a level of design there that's starting to look a lot better, you know. And so we're kind of getting somewhere here. I'm not rendering quite yet, right? There's some things I still need to do, 
but I wanted to make sure that my lighting looks good and my set dressing looks okay. Not all of it. I still have some words to put, put in places, billboards, banners and stuff to make it look good. But this is like 70% of the image, right? Everything is working okay. Now it's, we can then start focusing on things. And what, what I was doing today was just making sure some of that lighting looked okay, making sure some of those materials started looking good. Um, we're kind of like halfway into rendering right now. Next week, I'll talk about uh, even more rendering things. Um, but just understand, right? We want to set up that lighting phase early, right? Because we need to know what things are going to look like. I kind of had, I had something in mind this week, but it was, I was mostly focused on the form language. This and that, or uh, uh, last week, this week, as in like this version of it, which was last week. And then now, you know, the lighting is starting to be a lot more established. I'm going to kind of keep going and rendering and, you know, making some of these pieces a lot better. Uh, but we're, you know, moving the right direction, right? So uh, hopefully this makes sense. Um, if you're kind of following along, right? Um, you know, we're looking for like a 70% kind of painting at this point. We're looking for uh, just a general understanding of what the lighting's doing, a general understanding of the set dressing. Uh, we don't need all the words and details quite yet. You know, don't I don't want you to be tied down by all the kind of extra things, right? We'll add the weathering, we'll add all the other stuff. Don't worry about that, you know, because... There's only so much that we can kind of manage on this kind of first round, right? So um, just get about this far, and then next week we'll kind of get into rendering, right? So, uh, but yeah, with that in mind, you know, great conversation, guys. I think um, it's it's really it's it's nice for me because you know when we actually talk about some of these like bigger topics, I I, I do feel like it helps out a lot more than just like you know talking about like world building stuff, right? World building stuff's cool. Don't get me wrong. I, I teach that yeah. class. I like it. Uh, but I think a lot of this, a lot of this content, a lot of these, these streams is really about talking about the bigger topics that actually get you from, you know, beginner student to intermediate, intermediate to advanced, advanced to, you know, junior level artist, you know, junior to junior to mid, mid to senior, senior to art director. Right. And like, mm -hmm. we don't, you can't learn that in a class. And a lot of these things, it's, it almost sounds counterintuitive a lot of times. Um, but you know, because you're at different levels, you, you want to focus on different things. Right. So, uh, but yeah, I hope, uh, hope that was enjoyable. Um, I'm going to take this a bit further, um, you know, throughout the week and then uh, we'll talk about it again, uh, next Tuesday. Uh, just as a reminder, I am moving. Um, so they're not, there's not going to be any streams this coming, uh, April, right? Um, so April, I'm going to be taking a break. So, if you did want to sign up for the live stream plus, uh, hold off on that. Wait till April. I'll announce it again. If you just join my discord, you'll see it there. Um, uh, for those in the live stream plus, uh, please, you know, disconnect it, um, for that month. I mean, you can't, you don't have to, if you don't want to, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, to save yourself some money, you can, you know, not sign up for the next month. Uh, and then we'll start back up in, uh, April and then I'll be talking to you from, uh, Japan. So, uh, with that in mind, guys, I'll uh, see you next week. Peace. See you.